It is uh, six o'clock. Are you sure uh, you have a mic in front of you, Grant? Yes. Move the mic around. It's six o'clock on April 5th, 2023. I'm going to call the meeting of the Planning Commission to order. Do we have the roll call, please? Chair Solom? Here. Vice Chair Sarver is absent at this time. Commissioner Dahl? Here. Commissioner Strauss Boyd? Here. Commissioner Binion? Here. Commissioner Wilkins? Here. Commissioner Hubler is absent due to a medical. Sorry. Um, city staff, Jason Sullivan, Planning and Building Supervisor. Yeah. Debbie McDonald, Planning Commission Clerk here. And at this time, we take a poll for the next meeting, which will be May 3rd. And I have a show of hands of those who are going to make it. I can be there. Yeah, okay. We have a quorum then, so we'll meet again on May 3rd, 2023. Chair Sullivan. Yes. I'd also like to see if the Planning Commission could have a special meeting on, uh, go check the date here. I just want to make sure it's the right day. May 24th. I'm in town. I'm in town. Yeah, yeah. We'll have a quorum for that one too. Okay, so we'll we'll, we'll have a, our regular meeting on May third, and then a special meeting on May twenty fourth. I've just got a couple of things that are lining up not right and wanting to get dates in. That would be good. Have the meetings locked in? Approval of the minutes. The chair will. The chair will. Accept a motion to approve the minutes from March 22nd. Um, yeah. There's a correction that needs to be made. Okay, well, we have to get Go the ahead. motion up. Oh, I make a motion. Okay, is there a I'll second? Make, I'll second it. Motion made and seconded. Any comment, corrections? And I mentioned this um, to Debbie. Um, so it says city management analyst, Harris, and analyst is, has an extra I in there. Okay. So it all, and there is through a couple different places. So, well, I also have a correction. Um, I noticed that Chair uh, Sullivan was missing from the uh, attendance. Uh, the commissioners that were in attendance, oh, you were there. Weren't I you? was there. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> I must be going back to February. <laughs> I used the last minute, so he was absent, and I didn't see catch that. Fine, we'll put him here. And we have the corrections for the uh, extra eyes. Those corrections made, uh, motion has been made. All in favor say aye. 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 Those, the ayes have it. With corrections, the minutes are approved. Uh, public comment and concerns, none. Public hearing, none. Old continuing business, none. New business, Allen York Park Design Concepts presentation. And... All right, so tonight we have presentation from uh, Scott Melbourne and Amanda Bailey with MXM Architects. They are one of the sub consultants that is working on the parks, trails and open space plan. Um, I guess new parks, play, trails, recreation, open space plan. Um, and what we're here tonight to present is three kind of concepts for the future of Allen York Park. Um, how that park should kind of options for how that park could be redesigned or reimagined um, to kind of increase its usability and capacity. Um, so this is just the beginning of the process. Lots more to come, uh, but we did want to get your initial feedback and comments thoughts uh, we will be presenting this plan also to the city council these conceptual ideas to the city council in may so with that i'll turn it over to scott and scott if to show the presentation right next to the red button that's for hanging up the phone there's one that looks like a computer screen if you click on that you can share your screen and bring up your presentation great thanks for that jason <clears throat> 
Can can folks see my screen all right? Yes. All right. Excellent. And and I apologize if you see my head nodding uh, up and down as I look between screens and make sure that I I know what I'm uh, sharing with you all um, uh, sharing with you all uh, from from this presentation. Well. As Jason said there, my name is Scott Melbourne, uh, and I'm joined by my colleague Amanda Bailey. We're with MXM Landscape Architecture, and we're uh, so pleased to be able to join you this evening and um, share with you what uh, we have heard so far in this ongoing process, as Jason described it there, that um, we'll be continuing on um, well into the summer. Um, and also quite quickly hear from you all and hear uh, 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 your feedback on these initial kind of possibilities that are, have started to emerge and what directions we might go in. Um, because we know that that's gonna be incredibly valuable to continue to feed into the process. Um, uh, that's already started with reaching out to city staff. We're meeting tonight with you all. We'll go out to council in a few weeks. And as we develop uh, the schemes, we'll go out to the public this summer. So um, I'll move forward uh, here. Great, so that process um, here in this slide, what we're doing is we're wanting to share with you, give you a sense of where we've been so far and what's what's ahead. And so um, towards the end of last year, um, uh, we got together on site um, with with city staff, with, with police chief, with others and and we just really listened and we listened to hear what um, what has been working well, what have been some of the challenges there at you know, Allen York Park and um, and really how might we start thinking about the future possibilities for this place? Because we know um, that it's just such a tremendous resource for your community that of course is also sought out by others in, in nearby regions like where I'm sitting right now. Um, and that, um, but in, other, in some ways, it's, it's, it's suffering from its own success. We um, went ahead and um, put together some initial options for essentially trying to gauge the scale of what our ambitions might be, if we could phrase it like that, of essentially how much might we be kind of scaling up these changes and improvements um, to the park and making sure that we're not getting too far kind of uh, over our skis or out of line in, um, in what that approach might be. And so we got some really helpful feedback from city staff that's fed into what we're, we'll be showing uh, to you today. So this uh, item three here on the slide is where we're at right now, where we're starting to now um, share uh, uh, some of these schemes with you all in the Planning Commission tonight um, we'll be catching up, not, not April 18th, it'll actually be at the start of May now, um, with the city council. And what we're doing there is we're going to be uh, um, uh, looking at things like circulation, things like the, the relationship between the park and, east, uh, um, and, and the highway, and seeing what kind of program elements might start to fit into, um, into this design. That will then be shared out with the community as you see there in item four here this summer. And so um, there's a whole sequence of events. We're really fortunate in that this work that is focused on Allen York Park is not being done in a vacuum. It's happening while all kinds of other efforts about uh, assessing and thinking about and dreaming about the future of your whole collection of parks is happening. And so we're going to be uh, reached out to particular stakeholder groups like those who have real focus on park uh, on sports. Uh, um, we also are have a uh, together with our our colleagues uh, conservation techniques have uh, a large program in survey that's going out to the public, and so we'll be able to hear back from the public on you know big picture what do they see as some some real needs and what is offered within their individual parks, and with that we can. Um, see how the work at Allen York Park kind of fits into satisfying those larger kind of interests. And then of course, you know, um, uh, you all have, you know, in these kind of efforts, it's so important to eventually get me back with the public in person. And you all have this really incredible opportunity because you have your whole sequence of summer events. And so we're really glad and, and appreciate that 
our timing lines up so that we will be later in the summer showing actual design schemes that, um, that the public can really kind of wrap their heads around and start giving us feedback. And then ultimately, this is all leading towards there being a preferred concept plan that's completed um, likely in the autumn that is shared back out uh, with city council. And of course is documented in such a way that you all are really well equipped to go after things like uh, RCO grants and, and, um, and, and other kind of initiatives. So that's, that's our process. And while we're talking this evening, um, um, we of course will have discussion at the end, but if there's anything that you need any kind of point of clarification while we're going through it, um, absolutely feel free to, to interrupt me. So, um, so as I just described there, um, we start off by listening and, and listening and hearing uh, kind of what's been working and what are also some real challenges. And this here on this slide, what we're doing is we're reflecting back on what essentially rose to the surface as far as top concerns and priorities. So certainly the issue of managing congestion and, um, and that's uh, especially true with the boat launch and, um, and then the, the beachfront area along, along the lake itself that we know um, at times is really overwhelmed and the police chief was able to describe in, you know, really clear terms of kind of um, how much of a challenge that has been to manage it and keep it uh, a safe place for people and inviting. We know that throughout all of this, there needs to be really improved access to these resources and these spaces. At the same time, some of the kind of the hardware of the actual site um, is is really approaching its, its kind of end of, of useful life. You know, things like the boat launch itself, the concession and storage building, uh, other pieces like this, the the playground, um, were built some time ago, and, and in a lot of ways built at a really different kind of phase or era of, for the city of Bonnie Lake and that um, we'll now be looking to the future of seeing kind of how those um, actual facilities might be upgraded and improved. We know that, that like anywhere, but maybe especially here in this case, minimizing maintenance um, uh, needs is really important, especially in the context of having really pretty dramatically limited amount of, kind of staff available, um, at least as it currently stands. Um, and then, and then at the same time, we will be looking at essentially what might be elements that can be implemented almost right away, uh, but then how might that also lead towards uh, a, a more uh, intentional kind of desired future that, that where there's a vision of what this place ought to be in the longer term, something more like a 20 year plan. Because in a lot of ways, this is a real kind of generational opportunity to step back and say, you know, hey, what, what should Allen York Park be for the city of Bonnie Lake on into the future. We thought it, it was um, quite useful to, uh, in addition to our, our multiple visits on site, and in addition to um, developing assessments for other parks within your, uh, within the city, um, to take a look at, you know, aerial imagery of Allen York Park and getting these snapshots where, you know, it can be so fun to kind of go back in time a little bit. And, um, and of course it's not so dramatically different, but if you look really closely and if you know the concerns of today and especially how that, uh, in regards to um, uh, management and access to the site and congestion, I think it's quite interesting to be able to see how this is a place that of course um, has already been evolving. Like it, it, it's, a, it's not a static place, it, it's already been changing. You know, things like we've seen that upper right image where parking um, is right immediately adjacent to the lake. Of course, that's all changed. Um, and so in a lot of ways, it's a matter of kind of guiding that growth and that change on into a new era. And then, you know, in, in this slide from, from just a couple years ago, we get a good snapshot of like a day in the life, you know, a moment of on your park kind of being um, quite intensively used. Of course, those main fields, you know, at other times, you know, of this particular day or other days that week would have had a lot of other activity, but especially in seeing that congestion, that kind of clustering of people out on the waterfront and, um, and of course, park, parking being uh, fully made use of. So these challenges, you know, we, um, 
we appreciate and respect the complexity of the challenge, um, which is to say that this is, as we've uh, gotten to know the, the, the park uh, really quite intimately over the past weeks, um, we appreciate that, um, that the way that these conditions have evolved um, um, have created a, a situation where there's not a clear, simple answer to how to kind of untangle this, this knotty, this kind of collection of issues and problems. So we've given it really serious time and attention and um, had a number of discussions amongst ourselves, also back with Jason and, and the rest of his team. And with that, we have uh, 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 clustered our ideas uh, for the future into these three different kind of categories. And so we find that sometimes it's actually quite useful to be thinking about kind of what might be the uh, kind of smallest, a relatively modest level of investment in change that happens that's a, a more of a minimum. What is kind of maximal, like how far could we really poly, possibly push this and what's halfway in between? So we'll, we'll look at those in a moment. At the same time as, as our efforts on all of this, um, it's worth remembering that, of course, what we kind of consider as included even within Al New York Park is itself changing. We know that there's this tremendous opportunity to um, to essentially incorporate um, the, uh, the the space to the northwest of the existing maintenance yard and you know area adjacent to the existing senior center, um, and have that included at the very least into our thinking. We know also that, of course, um, there is the recent approval of having additional boat trailer parking uh, go into place and replacing uh, ball field four. Um, and that um, there, of course, is the important work that's already being, uh, that's underway in construction there to the southeast. So that's the larger kind of constellation of Allen York Park as, it, as it's growing. For today's discussion, we really wanna focus on this core area that's that sequence between uh, the the waterfront, existing parking and playground, and the existing core ball fields, and be talking about um, what might be some reconfiguration that happens there. Meanwhile, uh, or I should maybe say eventually, we absolutely will take on and incorporate in greater detail those surrounding areas, especially after we hear the feedback on program needs and interest from the public that is just a, a couple weeks away. So, so earlier I was describing how we might think of these, this kind of minimum, medium, and, and maximum um, approach that's taken to the reconfiguration of the, of the park. So this overview slide, you're getting a preview of, of what those look like, and we'll, we'll zoom in a bit so it's more legible for you. Um, but, um, but essentially in that minimum option, what we're doing is looking to see how can we kind of just have what's already in place work a little bit better for all involved. Um, and that medium one is kind of building off of what is already in place and relieving some of the pressure. Those real kind of, uh, uh, those places of contention that where it's just overwhelmed. And the maximal option, what we're doing is we're looking to see what if we just kind of closed our eyes and just reimagined a really different canvas to work with um, to have this be a really tremendous uh, park space. So here in this option where we're building off the existing, there's a few different kind of key components um, uh, to what's going on. Um, as far as the boat launch, we're not showing an increase in boat launch uh, capacity there at the waterfront, but we are looking at um, how there might be improvements to essentially making use of that current east-west thin strip of parking and have that be um, devoted to uh, boat launch access. And then, um, and then having uh, the shoulder uh, of Bonnie Lake Boulevard be converted to on-street parking, and essentially kind of changing the, those flows in such a way um, that, especially now with the expanded parking up to the north, um, uh, we'd at the very least have a little bit of pressure relief. Over on the waterfront side, what we're doing is looking to see how, if there were going to be improvements made to the playground and um, and um, uh, the spaces there to the Northeast, there's really an opportunity to have those improvements be so desirable, so um, significant that that area itself becomes a destination where 
especially perhaps with families with younger children, if there was an interest in, you know, uh, interacting with water and the like, that that could happen actually here, you know, maybe at a spray park or something along those lines. And, um, and there's more room to work with. It feels safer. There still is the traditional access that happens along the waterfront. Um, but we basically are providing more as far as amenities and spaces. And then here, uh, of course, um, essentially keeping the same configuration for the parking, but still knowing that those essentially within a similar kind of footprint of what's in place already for the concessions and storage, that that can be um, certainly upgraded and improved. <clears throat> so, you know, that that is adds up to relatively modest improvements. Um, that's not to say that we, even this of course, still requires significant investment. Um, just a, a check there, maybe Jason, do you think that they're in the room? Are, is our connection still okay? Yeah, okay. I see that on, on my screen. Oh yeah, okay, I see the, the city is back. The room is back. Okay, great. Um, so. So those are really kind of modest improvements, you know, striping uh, and access. What's that, Jason? You hear me? Yes. We're back up and running now. We had a little technical glitch. Okay. Okay. Great. No problem. So, um, so I think that's probably clear enough of, of what's going on here. Now, if we move into this medium option, we're 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 really not only looking to see how we might add an extra amenity of um, extra kind of space and features that, that families are wanting to go to, we're actually taking that footprint of the, our, the thin strip along the lakeside and expanding that out. And, um, and that's being done by a partial rerouting of what, uh, West Taft Highway. And so um, what you see here is that that alignment, rather than making that hard curve up, up to the north, Basically, we just kind of keep the alignment that's going northwest, come a bit further into the existing site, and then find a, a point to hit, head up straight north. Um, and it feels like we might as well have that be aligned with the development um, that, that I know has finally gone into place there to the north of our site. Um, but there's, there's certainly some options for how and where exactly that, that north-south alignment uh, lands. But essentially, we're... We're grabbing hold of, of the highway, pulling it inland a bit, and then suddenly we can quite quickly be, you know, really doubling the amount of space that's available um, for those waterfront activities. And something that we found and um, are very cognizant of uh, in dealing with that waterfront strip is that, of course, there's, you know, near the fencing, near the waterfront itself, there's this kind of buffer of what's not so usable. And so um, the actual core usable area is even kind of a subset within that strip. And so here that becomes something much, much more significant. What you also see is that that, uh, that flow, that kind of choreography of, you know, accessing, lining up for the boat launch, launching, and then going out and, and parking, that could be really an even more kind of continuous uh, orbit that happens. Um, Meanwhile, um, uh, there can be uh, a much more intentional kind of connection between the ball fields to the west and the waterfront space to the right, where instead of having that be locked into Bonnie Lake Boulevard and having this pedestrian connection, cars north-south, boat trailers, you know, east-west, everything all in one spot, we can kind of just take a deep breath, move deeper into the site and have a, a, a nice, true, proper kind of crossing for pedestrians in, in some more meaningful kind of way. So, um, so in, in this case, we're, you know, we're building off that, that minimal option, but there's a, a formalization of the existing boat trailer circulation of parking. So it's crystal clear. Um, and then there's a significantly more space available for um, those new facilities um, uh, and, uh, uh, and structures that could be put in place. All right, so, yes. I'm oh, sorry. Do you want to take questions now or questions at the end? I don't, it's fine either way. Um, yeah, fine. Uh, fine. You know, maybe 
maybe I'll, f I'll f talk about this one, if that's all right, Jessica. And yeah, then, no problem. You're totally fine. Then it might relate to, to uh, but if there's any kind of confusion on something, feel free to ask. Okay. All right, cool. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that. We won't forget um, uh, what, your, what your question might be. So here in this max option, we're, we're taking a similar kind of approach, but we're saying, like, instead of, you know, like, in that medium option, we're, we're relieving pressure along the waterfront, but we're still dividing the site. This is a site that's just felt so, you know, um, bifurcated, so, so segmented for so long that we're looking to see, you know, what if just maybe, just maybe we could take uh, West Taps Highway and actually pull it in essentially along the perimeter of the existing ball field uh, area and have this be a massive, relatively speaking, cohesive canvas to work with as a larger kind of park space. What you're also seeing here, because um, we're in kind of max mode, is uh, the option of actually um, um, uh, expanding the boat launch capacity where, uh, and this is a great idea that came from staff, um, that where maybe existing facilities get ever so slightly retrofitted and are really more devoted for fishing docks and the like. But then on axis with Bonnie Lake Boulevard, we have improved and expanded boat launch and then the the swimming area gets also more uh, uh, essentially gets expanded, but also shifted to the south. So that's that sequence that you're seeing there along the the shoreline. Then within this much larger uh, green space, we have all kinds of flexibility um, for how the additional amenities get put into place and related to each other, and then eventually linked up with nice pathways and all the all the like. Here you see what we, what we feel, you know, just more instinctually might be that relationship where, you know, my goodness, now we could have some kind of, you know, more uh, 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 discreet and devoted outdoor concert area that actually is related to the water, you know, that that that, that actually, you know, it's, we all can imagine what that photo would be um, uh, for for events there. We, we have... Uh, new concession and restrooms and also storage, which we know that is a really big issue that can be related and kind of helping frame that concert space. There could be a spray park, et cetera. So, so that, so really what makes that possible is the rerouting of uh, West, West Taps Highway. Um, and, um, and we know that then there could be this really significant uh, reshuffling of the program within the core of the site. So, uh, so those are options that we're um, super excited to hear your feedback regarding, um, and um, kind of, you know, in, in the larger picture, uh, you know, just what is what feels right to you, knowing what you know from your your time there in the city and what the future might bring. Um, and, um, and then hearing your specific concerns and, and ideas that, like I said, at the start of things that we can be incorporating back into the next iteration and the next refinement of these schemes and plans. On this slide, we thought it might be, might be worthwhile to get, you know, a, a general overview of how these all relate to each other. Um, you know, one way or another, even in the, 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 the less ambitious schemes, we still have opportunities for improving access. Um, to the waterfront more generally and the boat launch in particular. Um, but when it comes to capacity, that's where there's a, there's a big change. And so we can um, visualize that a bit if we kind of take our, an oblique view looking into the site and just in, in simple terms draw out outlines of what spaces were, were defined through what you saw uh, uh, over the last few minutes. And you see that original capacity there along the waterfront where, you know, as far as a footprint is concerned, in the medium option, that is a little bit more than doubled. And then in that maximum mm -hmm. option, that footprint of what's a cohesive bit of green space that has direct access to water, it actually becomes something more like six times. Basically, what's if I cut through? So um, those are the schemes. Here's a list of key questions um, that um, I think will come out through our discussion. I mean, the big one there is 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 
is there any appetite for that rerouting? And does that seem feasible as, as far as a pursuit? Um, we knew, we in this process looked also at options for actually rerouting Bonnie Lake Boulevard. Maybe it would cut through to the north and, you know, maybe th that ex expanded parking would be a launch point for kind of, again, avoiding some of this congestion. In our reading of it, we didn't see that as, as so feasible because there wasn't the city held land available for making that cut. We also have the question of whether, um, from your perspective, how essentially how much do we, how much weight do we give to prioritizing the boat launch and, um, and its expanding capacity and access? I think that in just even in the developments of the past few weeks, now that there's the expanded parking, Clearly, that's something that's not going to go away. It's, you know, if anything, it becomes even more important because we're increasing that side of the capacity equation. But that's a, a question. Um, we'll be talking in more detail about parking areas, but uh, for now, our, our gut instinct is that northwest corner is going to be incredibly valuable for a kind of overflow, high peak usage parking, um, and that we will then find ways of maximizing accessibility and, and more kind of everyday off-peak access within the sites that you saw. And then something that is maybe a little bit less of a discussion point for today, but it's something that's going to be uh, very much part of the larger conversation as we look at other parks uh, and, and, and Bonnie Lakes offerings on the whole, is kind of how and where do sports fields live? And how and where do they get distributed across the city uh, how and where might there be a, a future kind of concentration of those of those facilities? Um, but that's something that we know it might be part of what's part of the shift of what's changing here at Allen York Park. Um, okay, so that's uh, that's a, a fair bit uh, to digest. Um, hopefully, um, I know sometimes when we're online, like we are tonight, um, you know, it's like I'm speaking into the ether. Um, but really, really welcome your feedback and, and we'll take any questions you have. Yeah, Debbie. So I have some real grave concerns about the residential areas that are abutting all of this and the quality of life that they're going to lose. Um, what? Sorry. Um, I don't, my concern is around the residential areas that abut the park areas. Um, their quality of life will diminish quite a bit along with potentially their property values. And um, I have some genuine concerns for those individuals, especially some of those folks who have lived there for 20, 30, 40 years um, and have enjoyed the lake. I feel like they're going to lose, they're going to lose that. And I mean, it's already bad enough the way it is right now, but to expand what we're doing, either some eminent domain issues need to be considered or something, but I'm, I'm genuinely concerned for those individuals that live around there. There was also the lady that came to us and talked about Bonnie Lake Boulevard and the speeding. Mm -hmm. Exactly, so once you include your, once you increase your traffic patterns and you also mm -hmm. increase the ability for people to, you know, speed, we have enough problems. I mean, I live down off of Angeline and I'm telling you what, I also know Church Lake Road. It's like a, it's like a speedway. That's that's part of the, the, the theory behind option three. By relocating the road, it's no longer a cut through cruise road. Because as you come down West Taps Highway, you have to make a 90 degree turn. Then you have to go down Bonnie Lake Boulevard through a roundabout then you can continue right on West Taps Highway. So and it's, it's important to understand that this is trying to solve those problems because right now this is all designed to be ball fields. With So it's, it's, it's not a matter of, I think, the park contracting. It's whether it's all ball fields or is it all open space. Or is it some of both? I mean, there is a hybrid model. That's a hybrid, that is, yeah, right. You know, that you but, could have some ball fields, but it couldn't contain all of the ball fields. Right, and I, and I think that that's the option, the design, the theory behind three is by relocating that road and shifting the parking over to the old city hall site, you're trying to begin to address some of those negative externalities of having the park there. I mean, that's the, the working concept. And so what's happened with the nesting eagles out there? Um, well, they've the the areas have been protested, but eagles are no longer 
a protected species. Okay. They're off the Endangered Species Act. So as long as you're not taking down a tree that has a nesting eagle in it, because there are some protections for that, but it's not the same as it was 10 or 15 years ago where they were endangered species and you had to like clear out big areas. Because um, we used to have some trees that were do not touch yeah. because they have nesting eagles. And those ones that were on landing lake taps are still there. Gotcha, thank you. And this one actually tries to keep the road inside the current park boundaries without taking out that tree line. So it kind of skirts the tree line. I'm still concerned about the residents that live there. You know, I I just, I feel like the quality of their life is going to be diminished even more than it currently is in the peak of the summer, so. You know, um, if, if, if I, oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to yeah, make Scott, sure that, yeah. yeah, I just want to make sure that I, that's, it's great to hear those uh, concerns and um, absolutely can appreciate that, um, uh, uh, that, the last thing that anyone wants to do is to take what are already these challenges and problems and tensions between, you know, surrounding residents and um, use of the park and amplify that. You know, if, you know, this whole effort, I think, um, you know, should be leading towards uh, a way of kind of relieving that and finding a better balance. But just to make sure that we're uh, understanding what, what you're describing there, Debbie, um, the your main concern for the residents is coming from you're, what you're seeing is that if, if essentially even more, there's going to be even heavier use of the park, um, that then it's just the numbers are going up and the challenges and that conflict is also increasing. Is that, is that behind Correct. the concern? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Any other question? Uh, Chair Solom, I think uh, Jessica Binion had a question online. I do. Okay, so I drive that road a lot. My kids go to elementary school just right up the road. Um, so in option one and two, I see that the boat launch like lineup is changed. But for me, the biggest issue is not the boats that are lining up. It's the boats that are like turning around to try to like back into the boat launch and they go out into the road and stop traffic and go back in. In options, like I see option three, that's kind of addressed. It seems like it's a bigger area. And options one and two, are those addressed at all? Is the belt launch like deeper or anything like that? So we stop having people like backing up into traffic? That, that, that's a great uh, point, Jessica. As they're shown right now, that change is not happening. Um, okay. And so um, – all that said, you know, there's there's no hard lines on kind of how we're clustering these different ideas necessarily. And so exactly like you pointed out, um, you know, in that first option, um, because we're not making any changes to the road alignment, probably there couldn't be any improvement made there. But in the second option, really what we're doing in the third option of basically expanding and, and basically moving all that turning around and backing up all that, have it be within the actual site rather than on the highway itself, um, that would still, that that absolutely could happen there as well. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Jeff? Oh, I was just going to comment that uh, as far as the, the quality of life concern, it looks like the maximum, uh, the third option would actually improve but I didn't realize it was it, your question was more towards the amount of people would would be there. So I guess that's always a possibility. But um, I look at this and I'm thinking that 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 third option is great because it allows less pedestrian crossing of that street. And um, I know as a, a father of young children, I I have probably been to Allen York Park a handful of times just because. I didn't like going there, I, I, crossing that street to me. I mean, I, I know how people drive along that road, even though it's uh, heavily patrolled. Um, so I, I can appreciate that, that maximum change probably the most out of any of these, um, especially when we look at the, the boat launches enlarged, the, the flow of traffic seems to be off of the main road completely. Um, yeah, I just, I can appreciate that more. Yeah, Oh, go ahead, Scott. You know, I, I, and just building off of that, um, I think that from our perspective, uh, I mean, in in all of this, we're, you know, our our role is to hear your your feedback and and interpret the concerns and kind of 
share back what we see as options and then continue that cycle. So we have no, you know, skin in the game as it were. Um, but from our perspective, that max option really does give the most flexibility and, and how we kind of configure and fine tune essentially what will ultimately be the feeling of this place. And that can happen um, um, through, you know, so many different design cues of, you know, the sizing of the spaces, the particular amenities that are brought on, the relationship between the parking and this core area. Um, and so, um, so I just want to reflect back on that, that, um, um, you know, I think that even if there, what it was decided that there was an intent of actually, in many ways, kind of toning down um, the energy level of this collection of spaces that actually we can most effectively do that in that third option if if that's what was wanted. Yeah, and Scott, can you go back to the, like, I think it's the second slide, and I, I just, I kind of, one of the things that we talked about when we talked about with the chief, um, understanding those kind of, uh, no, I'm sorry, that was a slide, you were right on that slide, the one that shows the whole park, the, yeah, that one, perfect. One of the things that when we were talking to Chief Jeter, um, and their biggest concern with these kind of impacts on um, the, in, the residents in that area. Um, one of the things that he brought up is there a, there's a lack of physical control of the park. There's so many ways in and out of the park that there's no way to kind of shut the park down if it got over capacity, right? Because of how the parking works, how it's laid out. So the, the thought be kind of behind option three is if you, and I will say the boat trailer parking that is shown on here is going forward. The council kind of said, that's a, that's a done deal. It's under, it's getting under design contract. But by doing option three, there's a couple of things that we're able to do with the park from a security standpoint that we aren't able to do now. So I don't know if you've ever been up to the other lake park that's owned by the county. It has one way in, one way out. When it gets over capacity, they can shut it down. Mm -hmm. With option three, there's one way in and one way out of the boat launch. There's one park, there's a, there's a gated um, boat trailer parking area that we can shut off when it gets capacity. We can shut off the boat launch when it gets capacity because it's going to be gated. The park can also then be fenced because there's not a road bisecting the park. And by doing that, you have control over the parking lot, which is on the north side of Bonnie Lake Boulevard. You also have access gates to the park, which you can then limit entry if it's one of those days and it's super hot and it's super crowded you have physical control to limit the number of people. Um, one thing that's not part of this that Ryan and I are already talking about is whether or not we should establish an RPZ around the park, which is a restricted parking zone that prevents people from parking on the street during certain times of the day or certain times of the year, which is another way to manage those externalities. Some of the biggest complaints that we've heard from the park really more are related to the, there's two big ones that we hear. The, the lack of parking and people parking in neighborhoods. And so by creating a large parking lot that can be used, we're attempting to solve that one. The other one that we hear a lot of times is boat trailer parking all over the neighborhoods, creating the boat park a trailer on the RPZ, that one. And then the third one is that the area of the beach area where the kids wanna play and everybody, it's so compacted on the lake that it gets overcrowded. So. I think that's where I think Scott was trying to go with option three is to speak to those. Now, given that the park improves, yes, there may be more people that want to use it, but you may have more control to manage that, that flow than you do now. Is that, am I explaining that right, Scott? Yeah, you, you did a great job, I think, of describing that. And, and, I, and I'm glad that you linked it back to what Chief Dieter talked about right at the start, which, you know, sometimes it's really helpful to hear from someone like him, I mean, what's his dream? You know, not that that's what we're implementing necessarily, but that that is what he described to us is he just wanting more control over how and where people are accessing the park. And um, and just as Jason was describing there, that's what's led us towards that, that third option, feeling like if at all feasible, it could be really amazing. Like it could really set us up for all kinds of successes. Um, and uh, and then just as Jason was describing, there are all those different kind of components, you know, within the site of fencing and gating and access, but then even beyond the the park boundaries and, and some of the the management of that uh, as far as parking, um, all of that can be thought of in a co in a comprehensive kind of a way to to again make sure this has the right feeling. Um, in in other recent discussions, there was a mention of Game Farm Park 
uh, over there and, you know, not so far away over in Auburn. And, um, and of course it's a very different site, uh, and it's different, different ambitions there. But I, as I walk through that, uh, space, I've been struck by how even when it's really humming with activity, it feels calm. Um, cause there's at least a few things done, I think really well, as far as clarity of circulation, people having kind of more limited access. And there's probably lessons, both positive and negative to learn about what, what the relationship is with that surrounding set of neighborhoods where, um, where clearly there's some kind of intentional division that's happening. What are the numbers on the boat launch? I mean, is there hundreds or a long line of people trying to put boats in and take them out? We are currently gathering that data. I, I and Scott, I haven't sent the responses I've got because I'm still working with our staff to get that. But um, I emailed um, Todd Bright, the chief, um, to find out kind of what you know if they have any counts. You know, um, we know what we know is I think we issue we've sold around 140 annual passes, um, but that doesn't account the day user who just shows up and buys a kiosk ticket. I'm still trying to find that data. Um, and I think that will enlighten that part. I will see part of Scott, Scott's responsibility is to come up with recommendations for boat trailer parking and for kind of how many people should be in the area. And I've, we're providing that data. So we're kind of doing that, that research at this point. In option, in the max option, option three is the, is there a straight line for the boat parking to go in? Yeah, Scott, if you want to pull back to option yeah. three, the enlarged one. Basically what happens is where the current swimming area is, this current swimming area is coming to the end of its life and there's actually a, uh, some decisions that we'll have to make about whether we're repairing it, tearing it down. So the thought was we would take out that current swimming area and then the parking lot that currently is where the double stacked parking is, that goes away and that's the access into the boat trailer parking area. So there's a way to come down, do all your turning movements and then back into the lake. So you would, you would come down and in that purple area, be able to turn your truck and then back into the lake. So it all happens kind of outside the road, which is kind of was count, which was commissioner Binion's concern. Is that, is that correct, Scott? Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, that's exactly it. And, 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 that exactly is kind of relating to what Jessica was describing there earlier about concerns where, of that turning happening. Spaces go? The old city hall site. So if you go, if when we were looking at the big one, there we have all that area where it's no longer the maintenance yards. And so the I thought would be that in that area somewhere, um, there would be a large parking area developed to park residential, the, the regular cars. And then we're, I think, building, we'll have like 120 or 130 boat trailer parking stalls kind of on the current field four and field four parking lot. That's all getting converted to boat trailer parking. Um, that and those contracts are already underway or in the process of getting written to do the studies and prepare the plans. And I think the goal is to have that open by 2024. So I guess the idea is that the parking's on the north side of Barn Lake Boulevard, park is on the south side. So you have physical, you, the, the parking separate from the park and you have physical control over both. Yeah, and you know, maybe the only other tidbit I, I'd add in there, Jason, is that um, especially if um, if there's a feeling that at the very least these, these schemes and, and maybe especially that third kind of max option is worth keeping in the discussion, certainly a next step on our side is to more clearly illustrate how and where that that more general parking would be located. And so um, just like this, Jason was describing, you know, their uh, old city hall site, that's going to be quite useful. We know that there is also an opportunity to kind of tee off and have in that in the current DCAT kind of maintenance yard that's in the core area here, maybe some additional parking tucked in. And then um, and then, frankly, uh, uh, with this, with this extended stretch of what's hoped to be a relatively calm kind of uh, driving experience, there could be some essentially on-street parking that that just very efficiently 
gives a little bit of a buffer during at portions of what's being shown there um, that again in uh, less uh, peak usage to provide really convenient access including some important accessibility stalls. Yes, Debbie. So I have a question, just a thought process. So have you considered, we'll call it a valet service where mm -hmm. a private company would come in, they would store the boats, they would prepare the boats, they would they would launch the boats for, you know, I want to come and play on the lake. Can you get my boat ready by four o'clock? I mean, I know that, for example, down in the High Lobos, they have that a um, little bit different. But, you know, again, I'm thinking about how do you kind of mitigate some of that traffic or the number of boat trailers you're dealing with? Is that an option? I mean, that we would even consider that we would lease, for example, space to a private entrepreneur who would provide a valet service? I think the Planning Commission can put anything in their recommendation for further study. Okay. Whether whether the council wants to get into that business. Yeah, and I don't know, Jason. I, I think I, I don't know. I mean, there are folks here, you know, that I know that are friends that, you know, they pay to have their boat stored in a dry storage place or they, you know, think about it. If somebody was going to fuel and load and have your boat ready to go at four o'clock when you get off of work, the kids, everybody could go water skiing, they can tube, they can do the things that they want. Is that an option? Would it be for everybody? Absolutely not. But they, there might be a select. You might want to ask the question. I don't know. I think we could put it in, and I'll, I'll, Scott, I'll let you stew on that one, and we'll 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 come back to that. I don't think that's what we can answer tonight because we'd have to even think about where would we put it, space. Right, and I'm not looking for an answer. I'm just yeah. I'm thinking about ways to to again mitigate some of the traffic and that might be an option because they would use some kind of a tug system, one vehicle, one boat, y you know what I'm saying, as opposed to m many, so. Yes, Brad, so I have a, uh, well, a question and a comment. Um, I'm kind of a big fan of uh, the plan three, the big plan, uh, go big or go home. Um, <laughs> But I have uh, concerns about security, I guess. Um, is there anything uh, in your plan that allows for cameras, like security cameras uh, mm. in the park? Mm. Yeah, you know, that's, a, that's a good point. And, you know, um, at this stage, we've not been talking about essentially that kind of security and uh, – you know, surveillance, if you want to call it that kind of overlay of, of what might be put into place as part of these larger improvements. Um, but, uh, but I could see how that it'd be the right time for more of that to be, to be there. And, um, Can we have a camera at the skate park? I seem to remember mentioned one time. Yeah, there might be, I don't know. I don't know. There could, there could be one. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I remember a few years ago, uh, I was just goofing around and I looked at the uh, City of Sumner website. They have a skate park down there and they had uh, a camera there. They had a couple of cameras, I yeah. think, and, and full public access to it. And it was kind of like, you know, police yourself type of thing. I thought, you know, what a, what a nice idea. Yeah, and you even get a sense of, you know, how busy it is or is not, you know, and, and that can nice be quite too. useful for the heavy users. Have a camera on the boat launch. How busy is it? That's right. Yeah. Launch watch. So I guess I'd like to see something like that put into the plan. That's a good addition. So can I maybe recommend a next step? Because I've heard a lot of recommendations and knowing that this is going to council, and I think what it would be good is if we had some sort of written memo or something you know, like your planning commissioner that kind of takes what you guys have thought about tonight and kind of puts words to it. Um, I know that our next meeting is on um, April, uh, May 5th, is that correct? May 3rd, but we're going to council on May 2nd. Do you think that there is any 
possibility or willingness to have a quick virtual meeting on say the 26th um, where we, where I bring, I just bring, we'll just do it all virtually okay. um, as a special meeting, a special virtual meeting. Debbie, I don't know how we would set that up on the, on the thing, but just to say, here's the memo so that I can take these thoughts and write them down. And I think it would help you, Scott, too. Would that, would I, would that be correct? And that would can go into the planning commission recommendation. And I'll share it in, I'll, Scott, I'll share the draft with you in advance so you right. kind of see the, the direction before the 26th. Um, right. And also you'll get it a week before too. So between now and I would say, I would say the, 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 the 14th, if you have any other thoughts, any other type concerns that you want us to bring to the council or things you liked or things you don't like about the current configuration, please email me. You will get my out of office. When I get back, I will take all that and try to put together a memorandum that kind of brings the planning commission's thought together and then the planning commission can vote on it. That way, it's truly the planning commission's thoughts and recommendations and going to the city council. Because this is a, I think, Debbie, you're right. There are lots of variables here. And I think getting this right is important. And I think the last time we did the Allen Yard Park Master Plan, we might have done it in too much of a vacuum. So I think this will be a good step of kind of building that. And will this presentation then be sent out to us so that we can? Take a look at it. Uh, if Scott, can you send the email me? Is it in the box drive? I'll, I'll add it as soon as we sign off here. Well, yeah, I can, sure get, he's going to put it in the box drive. And I will, what I want to do is I want to be able to print it. and. Kind yeah, of I will email you a link to it. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, tomorrow morning. Perfect. Thank you. And uh, a fast check. All of us here can make the virtual meeting. Okay, so our next meeting will be a special so planning commission, I told you this year, I think we're not going to have our relaxed <laughs> year that we've had in the past. So we'll have a virtual meeting on the 26th with the only agenda item being this. We will then have a full normal planning commission meeting the following week and then a special meeting on the 24th of May. And then we'll have one on the June. So you're going to have, but then we'll be off for August. So that works for me. Lots of craziness. April 14th. So Amanda or Scott, is there anything else you need from us or any more information you would like to share? I don't think so. I think that that sounds great. I'm so, so glad you mentioned all of that there, Jason, about um, uh, kind of formalizing um, uh, the commission's f feedback and reflections. That will be incredibly useful for us in the design process, but then especially when we go to council, somewhat like what we were able to show at the beginning of this presentation as far as what at the very start of the whole process we heard um, about the current conditions, basically we can give some kind of summary of what you all have been thinking and that will um, help inform the conversation that continues on with council. And then Grant, since we're doing a formal thing, I'd like to have you at the May 2nd city council meeting, sure. if you're available, um, just so in case there's any questions from the council about you, the planning commission's memo, um, you could speak to that as the chair versus me kind of. Could, could we just right now take a moment and go down all these meetings? I got several meetings of various types. Yeah. So May, May, we'll just start this month, April. Well, let's, let's do this after let's get Scott closed off. So that they can go enjoy their night and then we'll go through the meeting list real quick. So Scott, if there's any, not anything else, we'll, we'll let you guys go for the night and um, I'll be in contact via email with some more information and we'll go from there. Great. Sounds great. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Planning commission bylaws. So let's do the meetings real quick and, okay. then, and then we'll do the bylaws. So April 26th, we have virtual. the virtual meeting at, and we can do it at six o'clock or we can do it earlier. Is 
looking at people's time? Is it you want to do it earlier in the day since it's just going to be a virtual one, or you still want to do six? Six would work best for me. Okay. I think so six we'll do is a, good. Okay, so we'll do a virtual on the twenty sixth, and I'm, the only thing that will be on the agenda is the recommendation memo for Allen York Park. We will have May fifth our standard planning commission meeting. May third. Sorry, May third. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I don't know why you say May fifth. Uh, May 3rd, and then May 24th. 24th, you would have your special meeting, but it would just be a standard meeting. It would just be an initial meeting that month. And then we'd be back on our normal schedule. And then for you, Grant, May 2nd, right. City Council. It's a workshop. I usually would like you to be in attendance just in case, if you're available, just in case there's questions. This is the, the next, I will say the next 18 months will probably be the most work we do. And then after that, we'll get back to our more relaxed schedule. <laughs> right. So just bear with me. Yeah, I'm hoping not. We got the meetings shut, uh, put down bylaws, having commissioned bylaws. So we had some minor um, updates to the bylaws. Um, city changes for the new city hall building, which is Buckley, not Barney Lake, because of the way our mail gets delivered. Um, most of them, can, do you have a copy of the packet? Um, most of them were pretty minor, um, so I can answer any question, but it was mostly housekeeping, but because there was some changes, um, we just wanted to walk, wanted to see if the Planning Commission had any concerns. Jason, do you want them read? Um, I can pull, I'm going to pull it up. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm not as prepared as I'd like to be. I'm hoping that will be solved soon. We'll live. So I'll just go to the bylaws real quick. Uh, let's see. Um, so really, like I said, on the first page, just changing um, Bonnie Lake to Buckley, um, also changing that notices will be emailed to the commissioners. Um, the language in there was a carryover before we started using email for everything and having everything virtual and digital. We don't have paper notices anymore. So just kind of a carryover, just updating that um, to reflect that. Uh, let's see. Page two. Um, we got rid of workshops because we don't have workshops. Um, we just have meetings. Uh, changing the kind of person that's responsible, it's it's me, which is a planning and building supervisor. Uh, when this was written, initially I was the senior planner, uh, and so I was just doing it on behalf of the director. Um, same thing on page 10. Um, and then the, the agendas are actually prepared by us at the staff level. Um, so that's why we just removed per the chair's direction. Um, uh, let's see. Then uh, changing the del the delivery of the agendas to the packets. We email them. We don't mail them or deliver them. I think that was a carryover from when we used to do all paper packets mm -hmm. 10 or 15 years ago. Um, from our standard agenda, removing the park and design commission reports because those commissions no longer exist. Um, adding something to the bylaws that specifically talks about it on page 14, if you're disabled and need accommodation, uh, to contact your nearest staff member and we'll work with you to get that completed. Um, just removing that, you know, we have the forms on the table outside the council meeting, the, the, the chamber convert, the chamber, um, and then on page 16, um, there was a lot of debate about how things get approved. So we just wanted to clarify that after a public hearing, the commission may either make a recommendation that night or make a motion to move the item uh, to the next commission meeting. If moved to the next commission meeting, it will be placed on the agenda. So just some, there was, I think a couple months ago, Durant, there was a debate about how things move around. Mm -hmm. So we just wanted to clarify that in the bylaws. And then put it, put it another way, at the end of one of the public hearings, we all kind of went, uh, 
Got all these people here looking at us. Do we really want to vote or do we want to think about it? Yeah. And so we, we just kind of clarified it that you guys could move it to the next meeting if you'd like to. Yeah. Um, and then the last page will just be adding a date for when these new, to basically uh, when these come back on May 5th for voting, if they are um, approved, we'll have that. We'll just be May 5th or May 3rd. I don't know why I keep saying May 5th because I'm tired. <laughs> So that was it. Like I said, nothing, not a major shift in our bylaws, but just some housekeeping items. Um, is this a motion or? Nope, this is just an informational and whether or not you have any comments, concerns for us. If not, this will be back on May 5th for your approval. We've been trying not to have you vote on the night I give it to you. Um, it's been our kind of our standard practice. So this will come back May 5th for kind of adoption. Any questions on this? Correspondence. Um, staff comments. Uh, one staff, one comment I do have is that in your utility bill for this month, you will receive a uh, an invitation to take a survey for the parks, trails, and open space plan. So let everybody know. I know they don't like open utility bills, and there's lots of discussions about why utility bills are bad and what they say are bad. But please open them. There are there's a handout in there, both in English and Spanish, with QR codes to a link to a survey. So is it also electronic? Because like I opt out of paper. <laughs> we don't have it. We no one can opt out of paper billing for water. Everybody gets a water bill in the city. I haven't gotten a water bill, paper water bill, in probably ten years. I will say that there is no, there. What we've been told by utilities is no one can opt out of that. No, I agree. I don't. I don't get a paper bill for the water bill, yeah. but I did get a paper uh, uh, voting. Or I think you might have been selected for the random sample. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's two that went out. All right. All right. What I was told by utilities, we don't have an. Everybody gets a utility. Bill. That's what I was told. I get a bill. I just don't get it in paper. Yeah. My so well, right well, well, if you get the bill, it will be attached to that. However, you get your billing, it's an insert in your utility billing. I get it electronically in my email. Then it would be okay electronically in your email because it's it's just it got printed with the utility billing. So if it doesn't, let me know. And this is the first time we're trying this. But my my assumption is it would go to everybody who gets a bill, and there's a QR code that you can just use your phone to take the survey. So, Debbie, let me know. We check your email and go through the whole thing, okay. and there should be like a one page insert. But I think the the digital copy you get is identical to the should be. Once you open it, it's a PDF. Yes. So once you open it, I just I just look to see what the amount is, make sure that I'm not leaking water someplace, and then I <laughs> file it in a folder. So. So I think I. In theory, then it should be. In there. I was told we all we sent one to everyone. I could be wrong. That was my understanding. But I would check that PDF then and see if it's. Okay, I will do that. In there, um, okay. we're putting a link on the website. We're going to do social media blast. Perfect. So if you don't look at it there, there's going to be other ways that you get it. But yes, please fill the paper one out if you got that and send it in separately because we're kind of doing a controlled sample and then we're doing this kind of all. And the de and the data will be gathered separately, but let everybody know that it's coming. And please take the survey; it's only going to provide us better information for what we're doing. Commissioner comments. I have one, Grant. Um, Debbie McDonald, I do I need to come in to sign um, that I was at the meeting when I get back in town, or do you just write that I was online? Yes, virtual. Okay. Thank you. I, didn't, I was going to say that, but Grant stopped me. I think he's oh, done. Wow. I think he's done listening to me. Just thinking one thing. He said you were. Uh, <laughs> did he miss something? I did. I guess yes. Tomorrow okay. is an open house at the public services building. So if you've never seen the new public services building and want to check it out, it's from one to three p.m. Um, they're going to have the trucks out. The building will be open to the public. Uh, where we work is typically closed off from the public, so this is. Kind of a chance for the public to kind of come and see that building and how it operates. So if you want to come out and check it out, 
the building will be open. Uh, apparently, it's a great it's spring break, so it's a great thing for people to do on spring break, come and check out our new building. Um, so we're going to continue to meet here, though, for yeah. the time being. And we're just waiting for the AV. I, I'm, I, I'm hoping it's getting installed next month. That's all yeah. we're waiting on is the room that we're meeting in. Grant actually has had, we had a meeting in there with, yeah. with an HOA. It's bigger than this room. Actually, I think will work better for planning commission. Um, but we don't have any AV equipment. Oh, well, I mean, just the way it's set up for, it's not a dia system. It's all movable tables. It's more, I think, a little bit less less formal, um, but we don't have the AV equipment like the mics and the projectors and. So we'll just wait to be told to. Okay. Yeah, as soon as I as soon as I know that AV equipment's in, we're gonna it'll be. The next meeting will be out there. Speaking of that, we're we going to go with blue jeans for the virtual. Yes. Jeff, do you have the blue jean app? It's really easy to download. Okay. I do not have that, but I will. It's pretty innocuous when it comes to. It's one of the easier ones, okay. I think. If you if you log on to that meeting like ten, like ten, like five minutes early, it'll automatically have you down. When you get the link, it'll have you automatically download. Yeah, that's why I'm saying it's very easy. So. Very good. I don't want you to lose out. <laughs> <laughs> Any other commissioner comments? Yeah, Brad. I have one. Um, so I received a communication from Craig, and he apologized for not being here tonight. Um, he had a family uh, family emergency type of thing, and. Uh, and so I'd like to make a motion that we excuse him. You want to excuse Carrie at the same time? And, and Carrie, too. Yeah. <laughs> so the motion is to excuse uh, Craig and Carrie. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Discussion? All those in favor is say aye. 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 Members are excused, and I hope they feel better. And, and Commissioner Binion, you still get the award for the greatest glasses. <laughs> never <cease> me. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry if there's any background noise. There's like a whole house full of people, and I'm trying to go into a quiet room, but it didn't really work. Goodbye. Thanks. Very enjoyable. Okay. Any other comments? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Adjourn. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Ah.